Hey. Welcome to PW TV. Today we'll take a look at a diet that people use, whether they're forced to or not. This is gluten free living. Hi, I'm McKenna Thalen, and I interviewed some people around the school to see what it's like living a gluten free diet. I became gluten free when I was in second grade, so about eight years ago. And it was an allergy, I did not do it by choice. I got like diagnosed as allergic to wheat and gluten. I became gluten free two years ago, and it was my own choice to become gluten free. I crave food gluten like all the time. I specifically, when I go into fast food restaurants like Wendy's, I always want the chicken nuggets because they're really good, but then I'm like, do I get the chicken nuggets and then just be sick for a day, or do I just get a baked potato? Like, that's always the question I ask myself, but then I'm like, it's not worth it, so I just get the baked potato. Uh, eating gluten makes me feel like, I don't know, doesn't really affect me, but like, I feel bad about myself when I do eat gluten. Um, well, usually I get really bad migraines and stomach aches if I do eat it, but it's not like instant um, like effects or symptoms. It's usually like a day or two later I'll wake up with a bad headache or migraine and just feel really sick for a couple of days. Um, this brand called Simple, it's like my favorite brand. They have like crackers, pizza crust, and like brownies and cookies I can eat. I actually really like the gluten-free pizza. Um, the one at Fabiano's is really good. They have a nice like thick crust which is rare. Gluten-free is good. Thank you, McKenna, for that wonderful documentary about gluten-free living. Now we're going to take a stroll on down to the auditorium where my very own co-aker, Rachel Rademacher, has the inside scoop on the theater program. When you're an adult, you need to feel a little chill. Hi, I'm Rachel Rademacher, and I'm here in the PW Auditorium getting an inside look on the upcoming musical, The Adams Family. Let's take a look. The character is Gomez Adams. He uh, is the father of the family. And he's very, um, he's the funny guy, but he's also very emotional compared to the rest of his family. He kind of uh, makes up for their emotions with his own. And throughout the whole story, he's just conflicted between his wife and his daughter. My character is Morticia Adams. She is the mother of the Adams family. And I definitely say she obviously is very dark. She loves everything dark. And she wears the pants in the relationship for sure. Yep, it's literally her way or the highway, and you'll see that when you come see the show. She gets really mad at Gomez. <laughs> Good and um, I wouldn't, a lot of people would describe her as like emotionless, which I don't agree with. I think she does have a lot of emotion, but she shows it in different ways. So it's kind of interesting to like be able to play with that and like show the, her emotions in different ways. So. And again, you'll see that when you come see the show, so. <laughs> okay, my character is Alice. She is Lucas's mom, and Lucas is Wednesday's boyfriend. Um, she's very sunshine and rainbows and all things happy and yellow. So if you know someone who's like overly perky and happy, that's who she is. Mm -hmm. And I'm Wednesday. She's the eldest child of Gomez and Morticia. She's very dark, obviously, because she belongs to the Adams family. But Lucas is kind of bringing out this new side of her and it's basically her falling in love and becoming this new person, yet keeping her dark roots. <laughs> I think the audience is going to love everything about this play. Like, I think they'll be able to see all the like connection in the musical because I feel like if you don't have a connection with the people around you that you're performing with, then the play isn't going to come together and look complete. Well, I think the audience is going to love the whole thing because we worked our butts off to make this happen and the audience is going to see that. It's an amazing play and you guys should all come and watch it. I think that the crowd will like it because on a basic level, it's very funny and just uh, entertaining songs and stuff. Uh, but on a deeper level, I think these characters have a lot of depth and if we do our job well enough, hopefully you'll be able to see that. I think the audience will just like the overall atmosphere. Like, we've had a lot of fun, and I think like they'll be able to tell, obviously, just because of our acting fun. and the songs and everything. Yeah. yeah. I am very confident in the cast around us. I think we're all giving it all we can, which is important, because you can't just show up to practice and give it 10%, you know? Like, even on bad days, we all, everyone here is giving their all, which is super important, and we're all working really hard and taking it so ser like super seriously, which obviously is gonna show in the performance and making it, the um, performances stronger altogether, so. 
I'm pretty confident in them. I mean, yeah. I think we all get along. <laughs> I'm super confident in our cast because we all put 110% effort in every single day at practice. Everyone shows up, and it's just no days off, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that the cast we have is very, very talented, but I think the thing that the reason I have the most confidence in them is because people want to be there and they want to do well, so that's why we're going to do well. It's not because we have talent, but because we want it more. Okay, so I have lots and lots of memories. One, Lucas, Ethan, and I got into a really big, like, roast fight, and then they mentioned a very sore topic, and so <laughs> I, like, gave them this look, and then I started running after them, and then they got so scared, and they hid in the bathroom for, like, ten minutes. It was so funny. Most of my scenes are with Avery, so... <laughs> Every time I go on stage and he's not with me, I'll just yell his name and he'll just come from somewhere. And he's and usually just, somersaulting. Yeah. It's so or like weird. cartwheel. You'll just hear a big thud and there he is. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's fun. <laughs> Thanks. Now back to you. Very excited to see that show. But to go on a little quieter note, an epidemic has struck the surrounding areas. That epidemic is parking. Let's take a look. Thank you. I'm standing here in Puama, Westphalia's parking lot where I got the chance to meet up with an employee of PW's, Mr. Jeff Deigert. Without parking, you have, uh, you would have to walk from the cornfields covered in manure. You gotta have a place to put your vehicle, right? We have a, we have a serious issue with buses getting through and or emergency vehicles when people don't park in a row. We don't only show one side of the story here on PW TV. So I'm going to meet up with a notorious poor parker from PW and get his side of the story. I choose to park poorly because I just love seeing other people's faces when they can't find a spot and I'm taking, a, you know, four, five, maybe even six of them. Now that you've heard both sides of the story, you can decide which way to park. But PW's staff was gracious enough to let us use the parking lot to show you a little tutorial on how to park. There it is. Back to you. Just park your car correctly. Thanks for that. Not that hard. Just don't be a weenie. Moving on, Let's we have... Weenie. Moving on to a lighter topic. We have a very spicy segment known as... <laughs> Meme Review. Meme Review. In the 21st century, we have much easier access to memes and other types of media through our cell phones and computers. And as a result, it is our civic duty to go ahead and rate memes that are put out there. Now, for a few moments, of course, a meme might be hot, but most memes only last a month or two. Now, when you have the greats, these are the memes that stay around for a long time. And this is what we're looking for. Today, we're going to rate memes. Today, we will start with Uganda Knuckles, a meme that has recently sweeped the internet. That was something, was it not? Uganda Knuckles is a plague of 12 and 13 year olds joining this game called VR Chat and running around clicking and claiming to looking for their queen. Now, this is a very, very disturbing meme to say at the most. It stems off of the Ugandan meme of this man right here. Take a look. Why are you running? Why are you running? See, memes all stem off of one thing and then lead to another meme. And that's why memes are great, because they create a chain effect. So, we're getting to the important part of meme review. The actual rating of memes. So, with our first meme today, Ugandan Knuckles, we will rate it. I give Uganda Knuckles a 7.3 out of 10. So, this has been Meme Review. Back to the announcers. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks for watching.
stay classy, San Diego. 